We are resuming the hearing on TPA funding. We'll proceed with the next panel of residents. Uh, we have Francilla Jamerson from Millbrook, Felicia Gordon from Hernandez Houses, Henry Cox from 1970 Amsterdam Avenue, and Maria Trinidad from 28th Street. Maria Forbes, you can be the. Okay. Yeah. Let's begin the clock and okay, if you want to, do you want to, whoever wants to start, so. Hello. Hey. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Felicia Gordon. I'm the RA president for Rafael Hernandez, um, located in District 1. Uh, I want to approach some of the things that were discussed here um, that I find alarming. A lot of NYCHA's testimony I found to be untruthful. Um, I'm also concerned about NYCHA's relationships with some of our elected officials. With you know, this, there's a lot of ancestral relationships happening within NYCHA, which renders NYCHA very powerful. And with that attitude, it's why they sort of disperse some of the things that they do. You know, they have this Goliath um, belief. I say to the resident residents as well as the resident leaders that I think it's incumbent upon us to take our own control and sort of exercise our own rights and depend on ourselves as opposed to a lot of other people. The way that this um, agreement was addressed was criminal. It was outright criminal to present us with a legal agreement that basically, if anyone that read that agreement, they are shifting the legal liability, a lot of the legal liability of this fiscal spending onto us. It literally says in that language that they cannot be held accountable for things that they may or may not do. Now, anyone that knows NYCHA knows that they don't pay their bills. So a lot of, like you, like you was discussing the Con Edison or blah, blah, blah. This has been going on for a long period of time. So if you, if you I think there needs to be more outreach uh, to, with, I can, I'm so frustrated, I don't know what to say, but, <laughs> and my time is running out, but I think that it, it, there needs to be like a, a, a internal investigation, there needs to be an audit of how that money has been spent. Millions upon millions of dollars is missing. If you happen to reach out to a lot of the resident associations, you will see that 70% of the funding has been gone. There are people who have had a quarter of a million dollars in their funds, and now they only have $70,000. So for that amount of money to be missing, and then they come up with this uh, so-called agreement that they want us to be responsible for, there needs to be an investigation. You know, and I would applaud you as well as the other elected officials to look into a number of criminal activities within NYCHA. I think that this is great that we're here, but I think that as resident leaders or, and as residents that we need to take some of uh, the control back and potentially take this to a federal court and allow a judge who's an unbiased party decide on how we should move forward next. Because I've been disallowed um, the opportunity to spend my TPA funds to facilitate my residents because I refused to be coerced into signing a document that I had no insight in. So that's my concern. Some of them. Okay. I, I just want to, I don't want to go back and forth, but I just want to state that we share your concerns. <coughs> we're going to closely scrutinize NYCHA and the TPA process. I thought the questions here were tough. But I'm not aware of any member of the city council who has what can be described as an incestuous relationship with the housing authorities. I mean, I guess that's a matter of opinion. Uh, okay. I mean, well, I, I'm, yeah. I'm expressing mine. So. And I express mine. And fair enough. And, mm -hmm. and I'm not aware of any criminal behavior on the part of the housing authority. But again, we're going to continue to scrutinize 
the use of TPA funds. So. To coerce someone into signing a legal document yeah. could be interpreted as criminal conduct. I mean, that's improper behavior for any professional yeah. entity to. <laughs> You're liable for that. <laughs> you pay for your TPA funds. <laughs> no, no, just turn the. Speak into it. Hello, my name is Priscilla Jameson. I'm from Millbrook Houses. Um, thank you for having this hearing today. Um, I wanted to state that there was a lot said here today um, about the TPA process. Um, one of the things that I wanted to clarify, the Housing Authority was stating that because if they hit a budget crunch, that it, it, it has, it would decrease what we get for TPA. According to HUD, 24 CFR 964 funding isn't supposed to be decreased due to any budget crunch of the Housing Authority. Housing also stated that they are reforming the election process. <laughs> they should not be reforming our election process. We have a process that has been in existence, and for them to reform it, I find that to be a problem. They state that the TPA funding process is broken, but I have to say what is broken is the way that the Housing Authority engaged the resident leaders. Mm -hmm. That's what's totally broken. They should not be allowed to make any changes without the resident leaders being there to hear what changes are being made and for us to have our input put into any procedure or policy making. So that's just what I have to say. There's another thing they were stating about the use of the commercial cards. One of the things that they did not state is that the Housing Authority just informed us that we are not allowed to use the tax-exempt papers. So what happens to those resident leaders that are using the commercial cards that accrue taxes using those cards? Where do those tax dollars come from? They pocket. If we not are uh, allowed to use the tax paper of the housing authority, that means therefore we would have to put those taxes back out of our pocket. That's just my statement. Thank you. It's on? Yeah. Good afternoon. My name is Maria Trinidad. I'm from, I've been a resident of 344 East 28th Street Development for 46 years. I'm also the president of the uh, Resident Association. I would just like to say that this is a, the easiest managing TPA funding has ever been. I I signed the paper, but I didn't sign it just to sign it. Before I signed that paper, I had a lawyer look at it. The lawyer told me it looked okay. So I signed it. Another thing is that I started uh, my resident association in December 1st. And I went to every meeting that uh, they had for the TPA. I have no problems with my uh, card. I, I put a, a proposal for the year. Then I put a proposal for the quarterly. The proposal quarterly, I bought my chairs, I bought my tables, and I used and the office supplies. I used WB Mason. They put, I put the proposal, how much it was, they put it in the bank. I don't have to wait for somebody to decide when I'm gonna get the things. So I got my 
uh, office supplies the next day from W.B. Mason. There was no shipping charges. There was, you know, I got my tables. I got my chairs from another company. It's not, I don't. I just go to wholesale. I dialed up wholesale, whatever. It comes up, and that's how I get it. I put the card in. I have no problem. They tell me that when the Denisha uh, Wheeler Graham, she she was she's the best for me because she has helped me every time I need. Uh, a question answered, I just call her. She's there all the time. She n I never have to leave a message for her because she's always there. And I always ask her, what's this and what's this? And can I get this? Can I not get this? And I have no problem. Every My receipts are full. You know, they're, they're up to date. I scan my receipt. I mail them. I send them to her, and that's it. So I'm doing good. Well, thank you for your testimony. Hello, hello. Well, I, I take it you're supportive of the reforms. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Maria Forbes. I'm a TA president for 30 years at Clay Avenue Tennis Association. Um, a lot of things, Mr. Torres, and thank you so much for calling. This is overdue. Now we're going to have the 35% increase on our rent next week, okay? Um, you hear that, Nitra? It, it was just 35 noticed. 35% increase of the rent. we got to have that. The Freedom of Information Act worked very well. In 2014, I came back with a vengeance, and I requested the spending of NYCHA's money. So they only gave that document to whoever they wanted to give it to. I got it from the law department. I attended the executive board meeting. I screamed on Shola because she was getting ready to appoint her two executive board members to some auditing committee. And I said, look, I sent you this Freedom of Information Act over 30, over 60 days ago. Where's my paper? I got home, and I had 94 sheets of what was going on in Bronx South District as to the spending of each development. Did I have what each development was allocated? No, but I had to what each development was spending other than that traveling allowance, which was very, I'll tell you about that traveling allowance in a minute, but that traveling allowance was really something. So I want to say that it was not hard for me to obtain what was going on with Bronx South District Council of President's money. Um, no, I never agreed. So when they said they had the district's agreements into how much was being allocated of this 56, you see the Bronx South was the largest percentage they gave into agreement. The consolidations only have 190, maybe even 50 units per, per site. So Claremont Consolidation have seven tenant association presidents. The smallest site there may only have maybe 60 units. So that TA president only get probably $1,200. But the district was taking all of that money and indicating that they was going to give us an allowance to spend, which was not very true because the, the district chair, he was taking a lot of trips. Like they said, he didn't have no, no, no means. Of stuff, so, I'm gonna so get on yeah. with it. I'm gonna get with it, um, Richie. Just one minute. Okay. The Ed executive boards are not educated enough to handle this money, and if they saying that they give training out of this TPA funding of forty percent, that's a lie. We have not gotten any training from NYCHA since the existence of the TPA funding. How many people you really want to know run that TPA out of the 40%? Only four to five NYCHA workers. What are they doing with the 40% of millions of dollars to run it? So I want to conclude with a question just very quick. Are you, are you supportive of the decision? No, I'm not. Oh, wait, let, me, let me finish the question and then <laughs> it's, uh -huh. it, it, seems to, it seems to me you're supportive of the decision to redistribute the funds from the district to the local council. The money need. It seems like you want the money they to flow to directly to you. Richie, let me, let me say this. 
I've been a fiscal conduit over yeah. for over three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I know how to manage and operate yeah. money. I've, I'm a five hundred one c three since ninety five. Does my fellow TA presidents need to be educated? Yes, they need to be yeah. educated. I'm asking a different question though. I agree okay. that. Uh, do you want? Do you feel like the dollar should flow to you locally, or should it go through the district? Yes. Yes to. To me. To you. Okay. To me. So you agree? You know why? Because the man was still in the money. The district chair, John Johnson, was still in the money. Then you hear them say, "Excuse me, one minute." That let you spoil. You heard the lady Uh say, "Whereas there was a development that had an underlying quorum." And primarily took trips. Did he distribute the money okay, to so the I, residents? We're not. We're no. Not, we're not here to adjudicate accusations of okay. that, right? This is not a criminal court. Okay. But, but it seems like you're supportive of NYCHA's decision if, to if distribute they, those they dollars. If they're lying right here, Richie, they lying. They said they took forty percent of the money to give the NYCHA residents training. They didn't give us no training. They said that they got ten people to staff. They don't have no staff. There's only four people operating the TPA funding from since 1919 I'm telling you so am I if, give me my money yes give me my money because I didn't I'm tired of people stealing my money I'm tired of NYCHA stealing my money and I'm tired of the Bronx South Council of President stealing my money I'm tired of the new chair who is the Bronx South Council of President stealing my money has Rab ever came back and shared this meeting from 2015 with us, nobody never called me and asked me about anything. So, so fair go ahead, Richard. Uh, just for the record, um, I have not stolen any money from you. So no. You, okay. No, you uh, didn't. No, you didn't. So, but your point has been taken. Thank you so much for your testimony. And well, I wasn't finished. I wanted no, to we, add we, on. We, 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 Richie? We, we have a time limit. I'm sorry. It was. I'm sorry, Miss Forbes. Y'all, yeah, I have to. Go ahead, all right. Richie. But you can, you can call me anytime. Uh, the next panel is Miss Holmes. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Somebody want to step down? Give me some more time. Oh, okay. Miss Torres. I'm uh, Tyrone Paul from Jesus Christ St. Nicholas Houses. Uh, Hattie Hightower. I don't forget what from I Glenwood Development Housing. I forgot what I was even going to say. Oh, this is Carmen Quinones. Um, I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure this is Carmen. Is Miss Quinones? She left? Okay. okay. That would have been. <laughs> yeah. Look, I, and I, I just, for the record, I, I support the right of resident leaders to say what you want it's but I, I would be careful not to level accusations against particular yeah. individuals it's just not an appropriate form because those individuals do not have the opportunity to defend themselves against those accusations You're right. so You're right. that that is the one ground rule i will set in okay. governing what is said so with that said miss torres or miss holmes no would you okay it's okay um i all the questions that i've had um i'm barbara holmes from mars houses um, all the uh, questions that I had in mind was asked by you, yourself and Miss Gibson, but there are something I had told you uh, on the side. What happens is that Niger, uh, I went along, I became president, and the training is true. I didn't know anything about how to run a, a organization of this size of my development. So I learned day by day, and from other people. I call people, and they inform me. Even I asked Maria for some questions, and they inform me. Um, but there were a lot of us that didn't know, uh, that were elected that year, didn't know anything about it. So we went along with everything. As far as the budget and the money was concerned, I found out how much it was. I found out some rules about spending it, and then... I found out just this year at a meeting that I was getting the wrong money. I, but I went along with, with uh, what Niger told me. Um, so when I looked at the budget of this year, 
against s- someone else's development and how much they were getting, and they had less buildings than I did. Uh, and I'm, I asked the question, well, where did that money go? You know, And no one can uh, explain it to me, and, and it really, uh, yesterday doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, it matters, but it's not something that I'm going to harp on. It's this year. It's this agreement, and you're absolutely right. I read it. I didn't get it, and I read it, and I didn't understand a word of it. Not really, and I'm an educated person. I have a college degree, so I'm not stupid. But I didn't understand it, so I went over, and I asked Miss Hudson. I called her, and I wrote down I uh, wrote down some questions for her, and she answered me back. The one question I wanted to say was the 20% that I give my district. I wanted to be able to give my district whatever it is that I decided because I understand between before 06, it was that's the way it went, that the, the um, TA boards, they decided how much to give, um, Nig- I mean, give the district. So then when they said it to me, when these meetings that we had and they said, well, most people agreed, the first meeting I never agreed because I didn't, um, as far as the money was concerned and what they were going to do. And, and I thought that the money was going to be put into all the money was going to put in. I didn't want to hold the responsibility. So I said no. But then when I found out that um, this cart and the the cards, uh, what do you call the card? The, commercial cards were given. I still didn't understand. I asked Ms. Hudson, I said, listen, for five, just one minute, for five, um, the point of it is that if something costs over the $5,000, I wanted to know where did they take this money from? How would I know personally where they, how much money they were taking out of my, out of the, the reserve, because it would have to be in the reserve. And they gave me some answer, so I'm really concerned about that. I was going to sign this today, but after listening to everybody's complaint and your questions and Ms. Gibson's questions, I'm in the same problem that I had when I walked in the room. <laughs> I have the same opinion, so I don't know what to do about this. Uh, I apologize because you're right. We should have asked well, why, why not leave the percentage to the discretion of the local resident council while I have a a set 20% for everyone. So did you know the percentage of your budget that was going to the district council budget? Were you aware of that percentage? Yes, sir. I was aware. They told us uh, that everyone was given up 20%, even the smaller developments, so 20% of whatever they, their portion was. And So you got 20% before the new policy? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. And I question that to the district and some of the districts here. I question that even before... Uh, I've been president, this is my third term, so I questioned from the beginning uh, what was um, the 20% and what they were going to do to it, do with it. And I didn't get that answer, so now I don't want to give it to them. Okay. Ms. Torres? Hi. Uh, Good afternoon. I thank you for holding this hearing. Um, I'm one of the 33 that signed the contract um, when we got the contract, the first thing I did was send it to my attorney. As you know, I have no qualms about getting attorneys when it comes to NYCHA. Um, and I, after the attorney read it and told me whatever his opinion was, I then went through the document. And with my executive board, we decided to go ahead. For me, this card thing has been the best thing because I don't have the aggravation that I usually have with favoritism and all the kind of stuff that used to happen with the previous administration. And so at the end of the day, I had to buy air conditioners because we have so much construction going on in Smith. I need the room to be a cooling room. I ended up saving like $500 of my TPA funds because I was able to use the card. And because we bought so many, we got a credit. And so, and it goes directly back into my, to the account. So it's functioning. The training that was given, and I've given my constructive criticism as somebody who professionally gave training to lay people um, at the Department of Education, which is almost the same process, part of it has been that, um, because I went to the training, right, so it was okay for me, but they needed to have examples 
of what they were requesting and how the process was going to be so that the people can do it. And that's a conversation I've had with Matuz and, and with um, Otola, with both of them, about the how you move forward, right? I think for me and for our organization, for Smith, we are going to incorporate understanding all, all the legalities that go with it because I think ultimately we can become independent as for funding um, and really represent our residents um, at a totally different level if we're incorporated, have our own 501c3 and seek funding and not have to go through the NYCHA procedure of constantly depending only on them. Um, so I haven't had any problems with the process in terms of you know, using the card and, and the money not being there and being frustrated, that has not been the case. You know, uh, it's a learning process, and I think <coughs> we need to revisit what needs to get, uh, some of the things that need to get corrected. I think that a lot of your questions, and I thank you for them, will probably steer them in the right direction. I think the agreement needs to be changed, some of the, the wording, um, but basically, I think that resident associations, w this is something I said the other day to somebody, to another resident leader. This is, we're the ones who live in public housing. We're the ones who deal with it day to day. And, in, and this is our fight. So we have to step up a little bit and step up to the plate. NYCHA needs to redefine their training and maybe make it a little bit more um, what you call, what we would call it, um, friendly, right? Um, but if they do that, I think it, it'll work. I think it's it's re it's intimidating. I mean, you know, because I took the training and I thought, I, you know, but that's needless to say. But I think that we need to, that we need to sit at the table, and I agree with what was said about we should have been part of it from the conception in terms of the questions that needed to be asked. That's my argument with NYCHA about other issues, but I think that the reform with TPA funds is definitely needs to be done. Let me, thank you. And your, and your testimony is the last, so make it good. Okay, um, hi, my name is um, Hattie Hightower. I am the newly uh, resident president at the Glenwood Housing. I've lived in Glenwood Housing for seven years. Uh, prior to becoming the RA president in January 2017, I was the vice president for approximately four months. As I've learned about the, this new TA process, I, s I have some mixed feelings about it. Uh, there were some things that I didn't quite understand, but for the part, I did understand. I think this process is very, was a very good way to go. But like all new process, there are a few kink, kink, kinks that need to be worked out and moving forward. I do like the fact that with the new process, I can purchase supplies on my own with the credit card rather than waiting for months like the old way. I read the TA fund uh, agreement, and although I didn't understand a few of the legal terms, I signed it because I did what I gather from it that there was a responsible that NYCHA has to uphold as well. When I attend the TA uh, training and the cluster meetings, I began to get more of an uh, understanding of the new process. I found out these meetings to be very informative. I also felt comfortable in knowing that I can reach out to my coordinator if I had any questions or concerns. Now that I am a part of the group, using the commercial credit card, I can now walk into stores like Staples and purchase office supplies and other essential things needed to run a productive resident association. Thank you for your opportunity to voice my thoughts. Can I ask one other question? Sure. Did I understand that they, um, because I didn't sign the agreement right now, that my family, they, uh, they can't hold, and my, uh, they can't hold the funds back for Family Day or the fact that my uh, internet and uh, phone service is off. Um, that, um, that's not correct. I thought I heard Mr. Gibson say that. Uh, does 
Does anyone from Nigel have an answer to that question? Or? Okay. Uh, my my, under, my understanding is that, in, uh, and I'll confirm this. But my understanding is that until and unless and until you sign the agreement, you'll have no means of accessing those funds. Yeah, not even not even the family. I thought she said that because that, no, not not, not family day. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, yeah, I, I think Councilmember was advocating what should be an exception, but but I think NYCHA's position is that unless you sign the agreement, you will have no ability to access those funds. That's my understanding. Okay. So then. Oh, I, the city council funds. Yeah, I, I just want to, I want to avoid back and forth conversation. I'm I, sorry. The city I, council yes. funds that Ms. Gibson gives me uh, for family day, I can use. Uh, the, two are, the two are separate. So TPA is federal funds uh, specifically for tenant participation activity, which is separate from council funding. Okay. Thank you. Yeah very much yes it's, it's just one more thing I, sure. I, I think I need to say my system here with the um, the TA uh, fund with the card there's a few uh, nicks and crannies that need to be uh, worked out uh, with the card uh, stuff I had a problem with it um, I didn't have enough money on the card at a particular time when I wanted to purchase something although I put the form in but uh, I saw something that I said I was going to get, but I didn't get it because I saw something else on sale. When I tried to get it, uh, I had a problem that the car was uh, denied because it uh, said that I had, uh, uh, they thought somebody had charged it twice and stuff. So it's little crannies and things like that need to be ironed out. It need to be like we're uh, allowed to spend $5,000 within that quarter. I'm not saying put the whole $5,000, but put enough money on it so if I want to buy something, I can because you have the forms in front of you as to what I need, what I want to buy. That's the only thing I say. But other than that, it was great. That's great. Okay. Well, I, I want to thank you for your testimony. I want to thank all the residents for coming, for inspiring this hearing, and for informing us with your insights. And I want to thank NYCHA for its testimony as well. Um, I want to submit for the record testimony from my favorite assemblywoman, uh, Yuli New. Uh, and then do we have any other testimony to submit? Or? Okay. Uh, with that said, this hearing's adjourned. <laughs>